All right, now a, a typical, run me through a typical, you, you go to school, you get out of school, and now what do you do? Uh, we usually just get a ride over there from one of the guys who right. can drive. Right. And we just roll some punts and then we go off in groups to play nine holes. Okay, so you don't get to hit balls on the range and everything? No. Not about us. Well, there might be a shortage of time too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. You know, even before matches too. Us. Even before matches, you don't hit balls. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. We still get the putt though. So you roll a few putts and then the way you go. Yeah. Well, you're state champs. <laughs> Maybe that's it. But. Um, <laughs> Well, we'll see what we can do. Um, so then you tee it up and you play nine holes. And what do you guys do when you practice? Do you play against each other? Do you play for well, sandwiches play or for something? Or? Yeah, we just play for scoring average in the team. Uh -huh. And based on that, that's who it starts. Okay. So you can't really hit extra shots or stuff like that around the golf course while you're practicing. No. I mean, you, you could. You can. You could hit. Yeah. But you gotta, you gotta keep your. You gotta keep your real ball. You gotta keep your real ball. Your real score. That's how he knows who wants to play. And you practice where at Dominion every time. Yes. Cool. And when you get ready to hit a tee shot on the first hole, you haven't hit any balls. You're cold turkey. You just jack it up and go. What are you thinking about when you hit it? Well, I, I don't have a problem with that one. I think it's, it's not that bad. I normally don't hit it bad off the first tee. I don't warm up. Well, I'm not saying whether you hit it bad or good. I'm just saying, what are you thinking? Um, that I'm trying to beat, like, the number one, two seeds so that I can, like... Warm. That's what you're thinking before you hit your tee shot? Yeah, I'm just trying to beat those guys. Like, what about being focused on where you want to leave this golf ball? It's not like an overall. In other words, the rest of the guys you can't control. There's nothing you can do about it. You know? So, all you can do is try and control the golf ball yourself, control you. And to know that if you control you and if you do your job right, chances are you're either going to be you know, number one or two, or, you know, that's going to fluctuate here and there. Don't be you know, worried about whether you're number one or Trent's number one or he's number one or he's number one. The system that your coach is using, you know, it's going to be whoever shot the best rounds in practice is going to be number one, right? So that's going to fluctuate. That's not a problem. The problem is to say, hey, how do I know that I can produce the right swing that's going to put that ball in exactly where I want it because I want that second shot into the green to be better or easier to do than any of the rest of the guys. You know, don't worry about beating the rest of the guys. In fact, Roberto Di Vicenzo, you won't know who he is either. Or you tell me, you see other guys with a real good swing, don't look at them. But sometimes you'll see guys with the most beautiful swing you've ever seen and they stink. They gag, who knows what happens. You can't, don't look at everybody else and don't look at the competition, you don't care about the competition. You don't even care what they're shooting. All you care about is whether they're cheating. <laughs> I hope they're not cheating because that, you know, that's, that's not fair, but um, you don't even care about the competition. Who cares? You know, if you really get focused on two things, you say, if I'm going to be successful or, or, or not, it's going to be, I can leave my drives in exactly the right place and I'm better at four or five feet in than anybody else. The other guys are going to hit a couple of good iron shots. You're going to hit a couple of good iron shots. Somebody's going to knock in a 30-foot putt and just went in. What are you going to do? You know, it's going to happen. What's the percentage of putts from 30 feet that they make? Five. Yeah, 2.3. So you don't make a you don't you don't make a living making 30-foot putts. You make a living leaving your 30-foot putt within your circle. And if your circle's only two feet, you better be an awfully good putter. If your circle's four feet, you don't have to be half as good. You getting the picture now? So let's go over there and we'll find out what, uh, what these guys got.